ANSI and CSA standards for vehicle-mounted aerial devices include the following design requirements. Work platforms must have guardrails and intermediate rails on all sides or be fully enclosed up to a height of between 39 and 45 inches or 0.99 and 1.14 meters. Tow boards or kick plates at least 4 inches, 102 millimeters high, must be provided on all sides except at entrances. Anchorages capable of withstanding 3,600 pounds, 16,000 newtons of static force, must be provided on the boom, platform, or platform mounting for the allowable number of occupants. Platform access must be provided in the lowered or stowed position, and flexible gates and chains can be used to secure openings up to 30 inches, 762 millimeters wide. Means of securing the boom or counterbalanced ladder during transport or travel must be provided. Locking pins must be secured to prevent unintentional disengagement and loss. Insulating baskets and buckets must be constructed of non-conductive materials, not have any holes or openings, and be tested for dielectric integrity in accordance with applicable standards. Non-insulating buckets and baskets intended for use with insulating liners must be constructed of non-conductive materials or capable of operating with boom tip covers and be identified as non-insulating. The liners must be made of non-conductive materials, not have any holes or openings, and be tested for dielectric integrity in accordance with applicable standards. Non-insulating buckets and baskets for use without liners may be constructed of conductive or non-conductive materials and have holes or openings. They must be identified as non-insulating. A slope indicator on the unit must be visible to the operator during setup. For mobile units, slope must also be indicated in the cab. Allowable slope limits must be indicated on the unit and in the manual. The device must remain stable, that is, not overturn, in all possible positions while sustaining a load one and a half times its rated capacity on firm level ground and one and a third times its rated capacity on a five degree slope. If stabilizing devices are a design requirement, they must be utilized during load stability testing. Hydraulic components whose failure could result in movement of the platform, material lifting device, or both, must have a minimum bursting strength at least four times the maximum design pressure. Other hydraulic components typically rated for burst must have a minimum bursting strength three times the maximum design pressure if a component is rated by another metric, the minimum bursting strength must be two times the maximum design pressure. Platform creep or drift, downward movement, must not exceed four inches per hour, plus any applicable height allowance when hydraulic cylinders are fully extended and loaded. All movements must stop if there is a loss of power or a hydraulic line fails. Hydraulic systems must meet requirements related to venting, fluid reservoir level indication, fluid cleanliness, cylinder loading, securement of threaded elements, and pressure control. If stabilizing devices are a design requirement, an interlock device must prevent all boom movements until after these devices are deployed. The interlock is intended as a reminder. It can be temporarily overridden and disabled as long as it is reset before the next setup of the device. If oscillating axle locks or controls are a design requirement, an interlock device must prevent boom movements until the oscillation is locked or controlled. Also, if not designed for mobile use, an interlock device must prevent operation of the device until after the parking or holding brake has been set.